be figured out in a couple of time on this. Now, Carla, about 40 countries have so far signed up to a collision, including 10 Arab states. But Iran and Syria are not being allowed to take part. Why is that? Well, for the United States and many of its Western allies, I'll tell you, the United States has called Iran the number one supporter of terrorism. So they do not want to work with Iran when it comes on fighting a terrorist group because they've seen... Uh, Hamas, it doesn't really matter if it's a Sunni or a Shia terrorist group, the United States feels that Iran, the government of Iran, is a place that is not going to be fighting the terrorist group in the same way that the Western allies in this coalition is going to be fighting them. I think that Syria, when it comes to arming the Syrian opposition, this opposition is not only going to fight the Islamic State, it's also going to eventually fight the Assad government. Uh, that's been something that the United States military here in Washington has made very clear. And I think that if they later make Syria a, uh, an opponent, it just would not work out. Well, finally, let's just go down memory lane right now, Carla. A similar conference was held a few months months ago to counter the Boko Haram threat, and now this one is being held to address the ISIL threat. If we're going to compare and contrast here, it's pretty clear that there is more investment in tackling ISIL than the Boko Haram threat. Why is that the case? I feel that that is the case. Uh, the Western allies that are involved in this coalition against the Islamic State and the Arab allies that have been involved in this coalition feel that the Islamic State is a direct A lot goes to say when you feel self-preservation is at stake, you're more willing to get involved in a coalition. Let's be upfront about this. Um, Western allies, the entire wherever it can. But when it came with Boko Haram, Boko Haram has been a horrible threat in the region. But Boko Haram has not really reached out as much. I know France is doing a lot to help with Boko Haram. When you look at the Islamic State, look at what they've done. You mentioned it in the package that you guys aired. Uh, they have killed three American journalists. They've killed a, uh, a citizen of the United Kingdom. This is a threat that a lot of the people in this coalition feel that the Islamic State militants could train their own people and send them back to terrorize their nation on their soil. And they well, I've, I've been speaking to the Voice of America's Carla Bab. We do apologize for the trouble we're having with audio, but thankfully we were able to hear uh, most of what she was telling us there. She's been telling us about the current conference going on in Paris to address the ISIL threat. Carla, thank you very much. Now, another news about 1,300 troops from 15 countries have begun a military exercise near Lviv in western Ukraine. The U.S. confirmed the drone had been planned before the current crisis in eastern Ukraine where government forces have been battling pro-Russian rebels. Clashes have continued in eastern Ukraine, particularly around the city of Donetsk, despite a ceasefire deal. Russia denies sending troops to aid the rebels, as alleged by Ukraine and NATO. Over the weekend, Ukraine Defense Minister said NATO countries had begun arming his nation in the fight against the rebels. Some 200 U.S. troops are taking part in the military exercise, codenamed Rapid Trident near Lviv, on the Polish-Ukrainian border, and some 1,000 that's some 1,000 kilometers from the fighting in the east. The exercise will bring together troops from several NATO member states and from former Soviet bloc countries that are part of NATO's Partnership for Peace program. Now, Hurricane Odile has swept into the beach resorts of Mexico's California Peninsula, uprooting trees and confining tourists to their hotels. The storm eased from Category 3 to 2, but still packed winds of up to 175 kilometers per hour. Mexican authorities have declared an alert in the area, warning of storm surges, landslides and flooding. They have also prepared shelter for some 30,000 people. The extent of the storm's impact was still not clear before daybreak, but people were injured by flying glass and power cables and traffic signals down throughout the city. U.S. Marines have been placed on standby to operate emergency equipment in case of landslides. 
U.S. National Hurricane Center in Miami had predicted that Odile would be a Category 4 hurricane, but it lost some strength as it reached the coast. The storm is expected to slow as it moves through northwest along the desert peninsula and would steadily weaken over the next two days. Unfortunately, two British tourists have been killed in an attack on a beach in southern Thailand. The bodies were found close to the beachside bungalows where the pair had been staying. Police believe the man and woman were attacked last night on the island of Koh Tao. The victims whose bodies were found with serious injuries early today were a 23-year-old woman from Great Tiamat, Norfolk, and a 24-year-old man from Jersey. The man's family has been informed and police are cooperating with the Thai and British authorities who are now leading the investigation. Local police have said that both had suffered serious injuries and a garden hoe is believed to have been the instrument used during the attack as it was found nearby. Police have yet to identify a motive or suspect in the killing of the tourists who had arrived in Thailand just last month. We'll take a break now on the world today. When we come back, we'll tell you about the consequences of illegal migration. Please stay with us. The world is an ever-changing global village. Hunger, conflicts, and the quest to maintain established territories form the next frontier of discussions that determine the world we choose to live in. Every word, every discussion, every agreement or disagreement is crucial. Be part of the next frontier be part of Diplomatic Channel, only on Channels Television. Welcome back. You're still watching The World Today on Channels Television. Now we shift our attention to Africa. The Libyan Navy has confirmed that many migrants have drowned while trying to reach Europe after their boat sank off Libya. He confirmed that 36 people had been rescued after the vessel, which carried 250, went down near Tadura, east of Tripoli. However, new reports have emerged concerning another sinking in which up to 500 people may have drowned last week off the coast of Malta. The International Organization for Migration, that's IOM, quoted two Palestinian survivors as telling them that the traffickers deliberately sank the boat after an argument on board. The Maltese authorities have not yet commented on the situation. There's been a surge in the number of migrants leaving Libya this year, with human traffickers taking advantage of the political chaos. Now to health news. Liberia is not out of the woods yet concerning the Ebola virus. With the Ebola death toll having reached 2,296 across West Africa, motorbiked taxi drivers in Liberia's capital Monrovia now fear the contracting the virus due to the high number of passengers that they carry throughout the day. For thousands living in the bustling capital, motorbike taxis are the preferred mode of transportation. But as the country struggles to contain the Ebola crisis, many live in fear of contracting the disease. I feel very bad because the Ebola have a lot of cell bound us, a lot of cell bound us right now because people are not really moving like before, as you can see. And in the rich, we have that, we're carrying people around, buying things, and more people right now, we are afraid. Taking one passenger down and back, and most of them are not equipped. You see me at 45 already. Ebola is a spread through body fluids such as the blood, sweat, or vomit of those who are infected with the disease. Healthcare workers are among the most vulnerable to the Ebola virus. This comes after Liberia's National Defense Minister told the United Nations Security Council last week that Ebola posed a threat to the country's national existence and was spreading like wildfire and devouring everything in its path. The Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is facing the reality that the Ebola crisis gripping her country could worsen in the coming weeks as health workers struggle with inadequate supplies, a lack of outside support and a population in fear. In the meantime, the motorbike taxi drivers in the country say they have taken extra precautionary measures to protect themselves. 
always involved is that we are carrying people who, we, who we don't know who we are carrying, whether the president has the virus, we don't know. But to prevent this race, 